Hello, this is the continuation of my discussion on the dynamics of faith. So, in the first video, I was establishing that uh, faith is an encounter experience of God. So, it is something personal or individual, but at the same time, social or collective. By that, I mean that uh, the Christian faith is a shared encounter experience of God. You know? So, that encounter experience that is collective or corporate is uh, the faith of the church. So, I, uh, I do not, as, as a Catholic, I do not just believe in God in the way that I personally uh, see it, but also in the way that the church teaches it. So, this encounter experience uh, progresses into theology, which is the necessary comprehension of uh, the encounter experience of God which God himself initiated historically uh, as well as uh, personally. So, this theology results in the formulation of guiding principles or teachings which are called doctrine. So, this uh, doctrine, all of the principles that have come out of the whole theological comprehension of the church is uh, what we call magisterium, the official teachings of the church. Now, integral to the teachings of the church is the duty, okay? is the uh, natural inclination to acknowledge that uh, we are indebted to God that uh, apart from God so to speak we are nothing apart from God we can do nothing so because of that understanding of God who is the source of all happiness of all life of all good and great things you know, because of that uh, realization we also come to realize that we owe God worship. We owe God to praise and thank Him and worship Him. So this is now another outcome of faith which is called uh, worship or liturgy or religion. So religion at its very core signifies acknowledgement that uh, our life comes from God. So we thank Him in religion. We thank God and we worship Him. And there's a way of thanking God. There's a way of worshiping Him according to how He has revealed Himself to us. So in the Catholic Church, we call that sacred liturgy. And so it was Jesus Himself who instituted this form of worship that we are now uh, participating in, that we are celebrating, called the sacred liturgy. Okay, Jesus himself instituted that at the Last Supper when he said, Do this in memory of me. What did he mean by uh, do this in memory of me? What is this? The breaking of the bread. So Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. And so he said, at the Last Supper with his apostles, he took bread and he, he gave his father thanks. And he, he blessed this bread and distributed this bread to his apostles and, and said, take this all of you and eat it. 
this is my body then he took the chalice the cup of wine and said this is the cup of my blood which will be uh, shared for you and for all so that sins might be forgiven okay take this all of you and drink from it this is my blood uh, which has been shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven do this in memory of me so that was the institution of the holy eucharist the last supper was jesus's way of uh, living with us that very great uh, form of worship so that has become our the very core of our catholic christian religion so we believe that the blessed sacrament the consecrated bread and wine become the real body blood soul and divinity of our lord jesus christ his sacramental presence unlike uh, other christian denominations the church uh, teaches you know, with conviction that jesus is truly really present in the blessed sacrament so that forms part of our religion the sacred liturgy this is the result of our faith of our shared experiences of god in and through christ jesus in and through the church which our lord has established on the faith of saint peter when jesus asked simon who do you say that i am simon replied you are the christ the son of the living god so jesus told him this is not flesh and blood that has revealed to you but my heavenly father and so simon you are rock so that is the meaning of peter and upon this rock i will build my church i'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven what you bind here on earth will be bound in heaven what you lose here on earth will be loosed in heaven so that's the church which christ has founded on the faith of peter so the catholic church stands on the faith of simon whom the lord renamed as peter which means rock that rock is the faith that simon professed you are the christ the son of the living god therefore that will also form part the form the very core of our religion you are the christ the son of the living god we are also invited to embrace that faith that jesus is the christ the anointed the messiah the savior of the world you know? the son of the living god god himself the second divine person of the holy trinity so that's religion is also the result of faith and then from there when we participate in the celebration of the sacred liturgy those who have embraced the faith in christ grow in that faith they become more and more christ-like following jesus all that jesus has taught has commanded summarized in the two greatest commandments that the lord taught you know? love god and love thy neighbor as thyself but what really christ uh, how really christ reformulated that is okay love one another as i have loved you okay as i have loved you so emphasizing that it is always god who takes the initiative it is God who has loved us first and we are just responding in love and every effort of loving him back is no match to how God has loved us no? in Jesus he died for us he shed his blood for us so that we might permanently be freed from the bondage of sin and evil in other words we might be freed from hell from the eternal damnation 
as a result of our defiance of the will of God okay, as His beloved creatures. So, the ultimate outcome of faith, I mean, the final one, uh, in sort of uh, this uh, uh, pattern of uh, the, the dynamics of faith is discipleship, following Christ, you know, following the footsteps of our Lord. So, Jesus has told us in the gospel uh, narratives, in, in the books of the gospel, uh, St. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, take up your cross. If, if you wish to follow me, the Lord tells us, then take up your cross and come and follow me. So, um, the cross could signify a lot of uh, interpretations. They may all be right depending on our respective experiences of the cross but i believe that the common denominator of the cross is our struggles the struggles that we embrace it because we love god we believe in jesus we would like to follow him so that is the cross the struggle the struggles uh that we would take in order to follow him why struggle because the world uh, uh, is full of sort of inviting pleasures no? the world is also holding us back uh, sort of tempting us to you know be e egoistic to be greedy to be proud so the capital sins are the sins of this world but they have nothing to do with the earth when we say world the world of humans so these uh, seven capital sins are interior to our human nature that uh, incl inclination to satisfy if not to gratify our ego so that is also what is meant by narcissism which results in greed avarice you know, lustfulness uh, sloth okay and anger envy okay so all of those are interior uh, sinful inclinations called uh, concupiscence okay concupiscence is our natural inclination to sin and evil but that is not a sin yet but that is our struggle our struggle is to discipline ourselves if we truly believe in God if we truly love Christ we needed to uh, discipline ourselves so say no to our concupiscent nature concupiscent nature we are not just mere creatures but we are creatures whom God desires to share his eternal love and life so there is an afterlife that's the faith of the church is not just in this world we are not just bound by space and time and that is why we regard ourselves humans as transcendental also in nature because simply because of our capacity to transcend the here and now to see greater things other than the physical material uh, realities the lures and enticements of this world you know, that make us greedy and proud that makes us sinful okay so that's the dynamics of faith so to sum up faith is actually a response to the loving and awesome initiative of God to share his life with us and to 
uh, invite us to an intimate relationship with Him. It is an encounter experience of God initiated by God Himself. And because God created us as rational, we are stopped on our tracks and try to figure out what has just happened or what is going on in our lives. This is something unusual, but this is now the process of God uh, awakening us to the truth of His existence, to the truth of His love, to the very purpose for our living, for our being. So that is faith. So when we try to figure out what this experience is all about, we are said to be theologizing. And our efforts, energies dedicated to theologizing would not be of naught, would bear fruit to teachings, principles that we now have to understand and learn from the teachings of the church, from the magisterium. Okay, because on our own individual uh, effort, we cannot really uh, fathom uh, the will of God. No? God intended him to reveal Himself through a church, through His church. Okay? And then because in our theologizing, we realize that God is real and is a divine person, then we owe Him our praises our thanksgiving we need to worship him that is an act of faith a response to god's uh ex inexhaustible love so that is uh, religion that is religion we are taught that we need to worship god it's not enough to just love our neighbors okay as a matter of fact Jesus taught us to do more than that, to love our enemies. So something very difficult, no? But that is the teaching of Christ, okay? But uh, it's a process that should also bring us healing, okay? So worship, worship. And then the ultimate uh, manifestation of our profound faith is living a uh, morally upright Christian life and that is discipleship. Discipleship is making ourselves available for uh, at, at the service of the church, at the service of Christ's mandate to go out to make disciples of all nations, to proclaim that the kingdom of God has come in Christ Jesus. And we give witness to that faith by living our own lives as a living testimony of the truth, of the love, the mercy, and compassion of Christ to others. So, thank you very much you know, for listening to me. That's the dynamics of faith.